Greetings comic lovers and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics, from reviews of comics new and old, to history, to anecdotes, to really wherever our whims take us. Black Cat number three. Did you think I forgot? Did you think I was just gonna leave you hanging with her trap there in the Sanctum Sanctorum? I wouldn't do that to you. Not like that. Felicia in peril at Doctor Strange's magical New York brownstone. I'm Sasha and we're gonna check back in with Black Cat. If you take your sweet time getting to things, hit that like button. Side note, somebody last video said that it sounded like I was whispering. I'm not. This is regular volume. I contend that everybody else is yelling. This is what whispering sounds like. If I was whispering, I would do the whole video like this. It would be like ASMR Black Cat. She's trapped in Doctor Strange's house. Meow. If you missed our reviews of issues one and two, you know what to do. Card and of course, a link. But for those who really don't have time, here's the extreme cliff notes. Felicia Hardy, the black cat, was hired to steal the deed to Manhattan from Doctor Strange's house, which he has for some reason. That's it. We're back. <laughs> we start off right back into the Merlins thing. Felicia Hardy can't say wizard or sorcerer or magic user. She's too cool for all of that. She calls wizards Merlins. It's a trait that's meant to be quirky, but it makes me want to hire a Merlin of my own just to enchant her so that she can say wizard. Make her say it. Felicia and her crew are getting their behinds handed to them by Xander the Merciless, since he's been repowered by the relic he stole. So while all of this commotion is happening in the house, Bats, the ghost dog, goes to investigate. Yes, Doctor Strange has a ghost dog. Let me explain. Bats appeared in Doctor Strange number 381 in 2018. So don't worry, you're not late if you're like, since when? Doctor Strange was left taking care of him while he was a vet, which is what he was doing after he was deposed a Sorcerer Supreme. I like to think he took this job so he would still be Doctor Strange. I mean, he was a doctor before, he was a doctor during, he's a doctor after. Once a doctor, always a doctor. Strange enchanted Bats so that his barks sound like English, which is why Black Cat will be able to understand him in this issue. So uh, get your tissue out because Bats died trying to defend Steven from Loki. This is while they were having a confrontation while Loki was the Sorcerer Supreme. It was a tangled web. This was all too stressful for Bats and his heart gave out. Loki felt really bad about this after him and Steven made up. Made up. So Steven didn't really want to talk to him and ended their chat pretty abruptly actually. However, after he sent Loki away, a couple of moments later, Bats reappeared as a ghost, a specter, a ghost dog. See? Loki can do nice things and that's why Doctor Strange has a ghost dog. Anyways, Bats mistakes Black Cat for Silver Sable, which annoys her, but she uses to her advantage. And Bats, he's a good dog. He wants to help. Also, you know, make sure the sanctuary doesn't get too destroyed. It's pretty bad. Black Cat goes hard. She tells her men to just unload. They're firing clips. They're throwing grenades. There's explosions. It all looks really cool until you remember he's a wizard. So really, it's not going to do anything because you don't bring a grenade to a wizard fight. You bring a wand or depending upon the lore, you just bring yourself. You bring your voice if you are quite finished. You see? Also, all the destroyed relics. My heart hurts. We then get a flashback of Felicia and her mentor, the Black Fox. It's sweet and it builds up the relationship between these two. However, they're also using it like an early 2000s sitcom, meaning that he's telling her a lesson that's gonna be pertinent in this issue. It's like Psych. Who else remembers how every episode of Psych, the lesson he learned when he was a kid would apply directly to the mystery he was solving? Cause I do. This is an important lesson my dear. You're going to meet someone or something that you cannot charm with your beauty or beat down with your brass knuckles. When that happens, you run and you make that someone or something someone else's problem. During all of this, we keep getting hints that he fought Dracula and all I was thinking was, man, I hope Felicia fights Dracula. That would be great. How much of a payoff would that be? So the crew are trying to escape and there's one henchman who's all like, Pfft. Magic. Magic is just science we don't understand, yet. Magic doesn't exist and neither do ghost dogs. Also, this is something he's saying to the ghost dog. Hurtful. Let's see how much you don't believe in magic when it kills you. Be floating around the afterlife like, oh, it's just science we don't understand yet. Xander is attacked by all of Steven's nightmares that we met last issue. It's gross. And the henchman is still going on about magic not existing. Look. What people call magic, nothing but quantum manipulation of local probability fields, making the impossible possible through applied force of will. Okay, then why can't you do it? Science me. I need to calm down. I'm about to fight a fictional henchman. <laughs> Xander, of course, is not down for the count. It is only page 14. But Black Cat has actually been inspired by all of her henchmen's talk about probability. And she remembers, 
have luck powers. Bad luck powers, to be precise. So Black Cat does have these powers most of the time. She has them now, that's what you need to know. Also, she looks absolutely crazed in this panel. And I'm nothing but bad luck, baby. Why did I say it like that? So she just goes for it, and Xander, all of a sudden, his spells are useless. Fire is turning to bubbles, things are turning to flowers. He's just completely ineffective. Here's the canon explanation for this provided by the skeptic henchman. She generates bad luck, the opposite of so-called magic. So Cliff notes, she is eroding his conscious altering of probability with her unconscious alterations. So the henchman is like, yeah, that's the opposite. It cancels out magic. But I'm just like, so they're just having a magic fight? She's turning his spells useless because she's subconsciously tapping into her own abilities. She's a force of nature. Also, she keeps going on about how many lives she has. It's a very cat-like thing. Meow. All of this means that eventually she just walks up to him and punches him in the face. One punch and he's down. Do you feel that's how her powers should work? Mileage varies. Depending upon your thoughts, this could be really anticlimactic or it could be really funny and a fun way to end this romp. Taking out a wizard, oh, I'm sorry, a Merlin with one punch. They wrap things up. The black fox picks him up. They've got the deed. The dog realizes that she wasn't Silver Sable. And Doctor Strange comes home for an epilogue and discovers that his house is in tatters and that really he should have a better security system, especially since he's the Sorcerer Supreme. Also, Felicia learns that the next place she'll be robbing is Yancey Street, which means we're gonna have to go see the Fantastic Four. And it's a good thing she's gonna be dealing with modern nice guy dad Reed, because otherwise she'd probably find herself trapped in another dimension and he would never tell anyone. That's how Reed used to roll. Then he grew a beard and got nice. We'll see how long that lasts. So I'm sure you all noticed the most important thing. Sonny wasn't in this issue. I can tell you one thing. He better not be relaxing. Little issue one throwback joke for you. So issue three, this was solid. It will read better in the trade where you can pick it up right after issue two. Cause with a gap, it reads a bit like all set up and then really quick wrap up. The punch and how it all rolls out, the denouement, of course that's gonna be up to your discretion on how much you enjoy it or not. Personally, I think it works with the tone that this comic is trying to set up, which is a bit more of an action adventure comedy type thing. It's supposed to feel heisty and fun so far. Never forget, things can suddenly pivot it. Trigun for me is the pinnacle of pivoting midway through. Were you having fun? Get ready for sadness. So yay, next time even more heists. I enjoyed this issue for the most part, although for me I do have that really big pet peeve about science and magic. They're complete opposites and never the twin shall meet and we're all gonna make fun of people who believe in magic even as they cast amazing spells before our eyes. Of course that's purely a me thing. There are some people who absolutely love that trope and feel that that's exactly the way things should be and would be. However, on the other hand, this issue had a helpful ghost dog, and I can't be mad at that. And next issue, I know you all want to know, Sunny's back. I looked ahead. What did you think of this issue? Are you reading this series? How do you feel about the art? I've heard mixed things. Let me know all your thoughts down below. And while you're down there, please do all of the YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so that you never miss a vid. I'm Sasha. Thanks so much for watching Casually Comics, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.